Welcome everybody. I'm very glad that we are here together. This will be the 12th day of a series of seminars here. And so I am already a little bit, so to say, prepared and warm for working with you. And uh, I will uh, touch some of those topics that are most inspiring and that I'm most enthusiastic about. And at the same time, I would like to say a few words about the two main topics. When uh, talking about philosophy, it always uh, feels like a little bit, uh, it's not really possible, it's not really permitted. Because if you give as a profession, I'm a mathematician or uh, I'm uh, working uh, with wood, it, this sounds like something you can do. But uh, philosophy just sounds as a profession very strange. So uh, the only thing I can say is that I stayed in the family business as my father was a professor for philosophy. So these things were our normal uh, breakfast talks and uh, the normal things I had to learn later. So for instance, uh, I got too much good literature, but I'm very fond of the Dutch language because the only cartoons that I had uh, in the beginning were Dutch as my brothers are 16 and 20 years older and they lived in the Netherlands and they cared that I also got cartoons, so I had only Dutch cartoons. And so, um, so in that sense, uh, I'm very happy that the word philosophy means friendship, friendship with wisdom. So trying to become a friend is something that should be permitted, even if wisdom is a little bit a high word. So, and also, um, I will touch uh, them in a way that is uh, just the, some of those topics that I like especially most. And that doesn't mean there wouldn't be dozens of other philosophical approaches to uh, questions in systemic work and in structural constellations work that would be as suitable. These are just uh, some approaches that I like. And also, of course, a day means that we will have a little buffet. And from this buffet, I will give you a few things that I think might be useful. And I'll try to combine them with some practical issues. Practical issues means really touching the type of therapeutic and coaching applications uh, of our work that uh, Inza and me are interested in. I will often use the word we, and this doesn't mean that I'm speaking in the majestic mode, but uh, I'm speaking about my wife, Inza Sparra, who also gave these last days together. And uh, we, um, many things that we are doing in, from the practical side, all things, and from the theory uh, part, uh, a lot of them, we did together. And so it's important for me that I can stress that it's something that we are doing together. And um, I will uh, take a few topics uh, in these days. In this, uh, this day, it will feel it feels like these days because there were so many before. Now, a few topics I will take from uh, Wittgenstein's enormously rich philosophy. Um, Wittgenstein being one of those philosophers who often are quoted even as if they were several persons. So. Uh, in the beginning, one just said the early and the late Wittgenstein, but later one started speaking about the middle Wittgenstein, and then uh, one started saying uh, some things about the very late Wittgenstein. And as the early and the late often were called Wittgenstein I and Wittgenstein II, some people even started saying Wittgenstein I and a half and Wittgenstein II and a half. So I'm sure it, uh, a few hundred years later, uh, probably they will still be speaking about Wittgenstein and may he have even more detailed numbers. For me, his work has a deep inner unity, and uh, so I'm not really agreeing with these uh, numberings. Uh, I think they, but they are, so to say, conventional. And I also, I won't try to give here an overview over Wittgenstein and Spencer Brown and Martin Buber. This would be just some uh, educational enterprise, and this is not what, what I think you have come here for. Um, concerning uh, two other people that were mentioned in the advertisement for this, uh, this is, uh, I will touch a few ideas uh, from George Spencer Brown. Maybe I will touch a little bit from uh, Charles Sanders Peirce, the founder of modern semiotics. And uh, the ideas from Charles Sanders Peirce are for me very um, densely connected with my understanding of Wittgenstein and my understanding of why Spencer Brown might be of importance for people doing systemic work. And as I'm often using this word systemic, I will say a little bit how I understand the word systemic, and then say a few words about structural constellations. And then I'm going to the topics in philosophy. 
first, uh, let's cons use or consider the word systemic. I think that uh, the word systemic uh, itself already violates a little bit its own conditions. So in a certain sense, I would say the word systemic is not a systemic notion. Uh, we uh, would uh, consider the word systemic more suitable applied in a comparative than in an absolute way. So we would say that it is, uh, makes a lot of sense uh, in the way how we understand the word to say that something is more systemic than something else. And then of course we have to ask what category of some things this is. And here I would just take the uh, more or less everyday usage of the word, everyday in that sense in the field of therapy and consultation and some other fields. That uh, means the word is applied to interventions, to whole methods and theories, to uh, special forms of therapy and consultation, to certain notions, to certain ideas, to certain exercises, to ways of thinking and behaving. So it's a very, so to say, unclear, mixed category where we are applying the word systemic to. And um, I would um, like to give you a sort of definition, although I'm a little bit skeptical about definitions in this case out of quite Wittgensteinian reasons, this being the idea of definitions by family resemblances. I would say uh, the way uh, how I define the word now is, so to say, preliminary and it's good to be a little bit skeptical about this type of definitions.